Welcome to Watercolors with Karen. I am planning on painting with you today a clematis, a purple clematis, and I have it all traced out right here with the centers all masked out for us. And I wanna show you our reference photo so you can get an idea of what we're gonna be doing. So here we are right here. And this beautiful photo was given to me, shared with me by a really good friend who is also a student and she knows how I love flowers. So she said, I think you might want to paint this. And I was wanting to paint a flower anyway for our next video, so I am so excited to be able to do this with you. Now I want to give you some hints. If you're not a drawer, I can draw, but oftentimes when I'm wanting to do something a little quickly, or maybe get to draw, get to painting quicker, this is a one method that I use. And here is another photo reference. And on the back, you'll see that this has had some lead put on it. And I'm gonna show you what I used. So I used this Lycra. It's a, um, a graphite crayon. It's a 9B. And you literally just get it all completely on your pattern. Turn it here and put a pen on top of it to get your image, and that's what you get. So it's a quick method when you wanna to get to painting, and because I wanna to get to painting, that's what I'm going to do. So let's get started. As you see, I have masked off the centers, and that really helps preserve that pretty center to the clematis. I'm going to erase one little line I drew, or not erase it, but just lighten it up a little bit. Okay, so we're going to start on the big part of the clematis first, the bigger flower, and then we'll go to the smaller flower. Now I want to show you one more thing before we get started. Out of this reference photo, I just chose to do these two. I chose not to do all these little ones, and that's the beauty of any kind of artwork you can choose what you want to put on. So don't be married to your picture where you feel like you just can't or you have to do it exactly like the picture says because you don't. So what we're going to do first, we are going to start with our background. And because this clematis is gonna be this beautiful purple, I really want to get um, a lighter background. So we're going to Put our water on our background first and we'll get it very nice and wet and if any of you are joining us for the very first time I say us I don't know why I said us I guess joining me or maybe joining the other subscribers how's that if you are joining me for the first time I have like I think six other six or seven other videos so some of the things I might be repeating, and some people will probably be like, oh my gosh, I heard that before in her other videos. However, because I don't know who is new to this YouTube video, I will repeat some important things that I feel make a good painting. So when you have a background to do, it's really, really important that you get a lot of water. And I am using a 300 pound hot press. I really like hot press because when I'm doing a flower or a portrait, it just goes on so much smoother. Now, for anything else, I pretty much use cold press. So you'll see me using both, I like them both. Now, if you don't have 300 pound paper and you prefer to use 140 pound paper, that's perfectly fine. But just make sure if you're going to use 140 pound that you really get it nice and um, stretched. Basically what you need to do is wet your paper really good. Probably the day before 
you decide to do your painting. But if you should want to do it that day, and I've done this before, just wet it, like really, really wet it, really saturate it. And then what I want you to do is you can blow dry it on a really low temp until it's completely dry. One of the reasons for me personally to enjoy the uh, 300 pounds so much is the fact that it doesn't buckle. And um, sometimes for me, the 140 pound paper does, but it doesn't do that for everyone. So it's just a preference. The 140 pound paper is a little bit less expensive, so that could be a factor, but I just happen to love this, so anyway. Okay, I think we got, well, it looks like I missed right in there. So I've got this very wet, and we're gonna start out with a raw sienna. This is a color that you will see me use very frequently, primarily because, I don't know what that little thing is right there. It's, we're gonna get it off. There we go. Um, I like it because it just, it seps other colors so beautifully, and um, I don't know, it's just kind of transparent for me. I use the Winter Newton kind, and it's just a beautiful color. I will use this as a base for many things, including portrait. It's just a good all-around color. I'm gonna move this palette so you can see this a little bit better. Now, I'm trying not to get any um, I'm trying not to get any paint in my actual um, petals, but I don't mind at all that I'm going to paint over my leaves because I usually always start with a yellow base anyway for leaves. So this will be just easier to put this background in, not having to worry about painting over the leaves. Now, I do want to make sure that we get this dark enough because, as most of you know, watercolor does dry considerably lighter. It's kind of fun if you're going from, say, acrylics to watercolors. It's a little bit of a learning curve because when you do acrylics or oils, you start out very dark and go light. And the opposite is true for watercolors. Now that doesn't mean you can't go dark, but if you wanna get some values and um, just get some beautiful layering, that's the best way to do is start out really light and then go dark. It works out much better. Okay, so you're going to be seeing a lot of layering on these petals. So we're just, we're, I don't want you to get bored, but we're going to have to put several different coats to get exactly what we need. I got to tell you the real bummer here. I painted this earlier this afternoon and it took quite a while and I made sure everything was okay. And then I had a student coming in and so I was hurrying and somehow I deleted the first part of the video. Ugh, I can't even believe I did that. And I just discovered it just literally about a half hour ago. So here I am at nighttime going to repaint this video. And the reason I'm doing that is because I have my IT guy coming tomorrow to get the new video. So if I stumble on words, it's probably because I'm tired and I hope I don't. So anyway, let's do the best we can and hope you enjoy it. Let's see, just about around here. Got a little bit more up here. I'm trying to be very, very careful to not get into my flower. And the reason is yellow and purple make a gray, but that's not what I'm trying to achieve. So I don't want that look 
for my petals. So I'm being very, very careful, taking a little more time to do that. Now, one thing I love, and most of you will know this and have watched my videos, but one thing I love about wetting the background first is that it allows me to mingle in a lot of different colors or just a few colors and they just blend in. So the watercolor kind of just does magic when I do that and, or if anybody does it, if you do it, you'll see. So what I'm going to do, I really want to have some green parts on here. The primary part I want is to be yellow. Now I got a little heavy right here on the water so before I put my green in, I have to kind of hurry. I don't want any of that to dry. So I'll just take this along this edge. Yeah, because that'll cause my tape to lift up if I get it too wet on the edges. So there we go. Okay, now we're going to go to some green. I think what we'll use first is this permanent pale green. It's a real pretty green. It's just, look how pretty that is. I use this a lot in my backgrounds too if I want to accent some lovely green. Like I said, I want the majority of this to be a really nice yellow springy flower, which they are. Clematis is our early summer. Well, we're not even really in summer. We're still in spring. So that's kind of where we're going with this. And let's see. And then when we're all done with this, we'll just blow dry it and then we'll get started painting the background. Now you'll see these little vines in here. Clematis have a lot of vines and um, they're really pretty. I'm gonna actually paint a little over this green leaf because I know that we're going to be putting green there anyway. And now I think I'm going to drop in just a little bit of a darker color. And maybe we'll use a little of this sap green. Let's see. And I'm going to mix a little bit of that. I'm not even sure what this green is. It's like a Kelly green or something. It's a really yellow green. It's a very pretty color. Yeah, so we'll just drop a little of that in. Try not to get splashed. This brush I'm using is a wonderful brush. I mean, it is wonderful. Picks up tons of water, but I do have to be careful because it also can pop some water on there onto my parts that I don't want on. I know that we're gonna cover that up later. So it's just, just doing some fun things right now. Get in here. See how that just spreads so beautifully? That's what I love about watercolor. When it's wet like this, you can just, you can just pretty much lay it down and it does its magic. It's just so pretty. All right, I think we just are about there. So we have this wonderful underglow of this nice raw sienna. You know, I'm not even sure if that was called Kelly Green. I don't want to mislead you at all. I haven't used this very much, but today this just seemed like a spring color and I don't have that written down. So it's just a real yellow green. So if you find one like that you like, just go for it. Okay, that's all we're gonna do for that. We're gonna dry, blow dry next. So what I'm going to do is just clean up these edges. We'll blow dry and then we'll get to painting this beautiful clematis. All right. All right, that feels nice and dry and we can get started. Now, any time that I paint with, um, purples or a lot of different colors. I always like to undercoat it and you'll see the reason why later. So we're going to start um, with some, 
I think it's called magenta. It's just a real nice pinky color. Right now, I have put this little tray, this little flower tray in. Just because I'm using such dark colors, I want to be able to um, just have them right at my touch and keep this palette. This palette will get dirty, but this will be fresh, fresh colors I'm gonna use. So we're gonna start with this bottom one right here, and I know we're doing purple ones, but I am going to start first with this lovely magenta color all the way down. Isn't that a pretty color? And there are clematises this color too, but that's not what we're painting today. So we're just going to come all the way down here. And while that's still wet, we are going to put a purple color over it. We're just gonna drop it right in there I hope my brush didn't get fried. It kind of looks like my tip is doing something weird, which is kind of strange because this is a fairly new brush. So hopefully that'll come out. Okay, well that's still wet. I wanna take this really dark purple color and this is, um, I don't even know if I'm gonna pronounce it right. So let me try to find it. It's one I haven't used in a really long time, but I thought it was really pretty. It's, here it is. So this one is called Permanent Violet, and it's by, I'm gonna say it wrong, so I'm going to spell it for you. It's M-A-I-M-E-R-I -E Blue. Mara, Mamery Blue, something like that. Anyway, it's not one I use often, but this particular one is really, really pretty. So I'm just going to drop this in right over the top of it. Now we're not going to do all of the petals the same. So this one has more of a violet feel, but we're going to also do some really dark purple ones, and we'll probably add some blue to this one a little bit later. But this is going to be our first one that we're going to do just like that okay all righty let me get that off okay i have never done a video at night time so this might be a little scary hopefully not <laughs> hopefully i uh, compose and do a good job my next color yeah is going to be that really deep purple so I'm going to go to this one and we're going to start still with this nice, beautiful, beautiful magenta underneath it. I actually tape down these sides because I realize that when I get to painting and not paying attention, somehow I get my uh, painting tilted a little bit and it's probably frustrating for you as a viewer to be able to see that and you probably want to go turn your board turn your board and I get so enthralled in my painting that I don't even think to turn my board so I thought if I taped it down it's going to be a little awkward because I like to change my board from time to time now you see how in this masking part I'm actually going into it but not all the way in the center because the center is actually yellow but these parts would come out right where the colors are okay so this one's going to be totally different now see how i can just drop that in there got to be careful again these brushes get really loaded with lots of color Ooh, that's pretty i like that and just let that flow Oh, that looks so pretty. And like I said, when you do wet on wet, it just kind of does the work for you. You just kind of have to work fairly quick, but it is a great way to let the watercolor work for you. I was also gonna tell you when I was blow drying, it wasn't a hair, but it was something that had fallen right here. I'm not even sure what it was. 
but we used to have a dog. We loved our dog, but she passed away in February, just this February, which is really, really hard. But anyway, oftentimes with our dog, she was a black lab, we would have little hairs floating, floating away in the air, and they would get on the painting when it was wet. So for those of you that have dogs or just little debris floating in your air and your painting is wet, I am telling you right now, do not take it up until it's totally dry. I have ruined and learned my lesson. Never, never do that. As soon as you try to scratch it off, you will make an indentation in your paper and you can't get it out. So you have wasted a really good piece of paper. So just for the future, that's what I did. Something, I don't even know what it was, dropped in here. It wasn't a hair. I don't know what it was. But I waited till it's dry and I flicked it out and it just came out perfectly. So when I think of these little tips, I'm going to pass them on to you. Okay, so let's go to this back one and we're going to want that to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to use a little in this middle. Ooh, look at that. This is new color I'm trying out today and I gotta find it it's royal blue yeah I saw it and I thought oh I really want to try that so I'm going to put the royal blue down first and then I'll put the magenta on the top just for something different we'll try this it's a very pretty color oh I like it but we'll see how it works when I put the magenta on top we'll see if that was a good call on my part. The reason I want this really dark in the back is because this is going to be a little more shadowed in the back. I hope that's not too wet. I don't want that to run in there. Oh, everything in me wants me to turn this paper so I can get to it easier, but I can't. So I'm just going to have to work the best I can here. It's hard to get up to these areas without turning it there. That's going to creep in there a little bit, but nothing, nothing big. Okay, so let's put some of that really pretty magenta and just float that over the top and see what happens. Oh, I think it's going to be beautiful. Really dark, really rich. This is tape that I'm painting over right now, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, it is running off the paper. That is really dark, but I like it. It's very, very pretty. Okay, since we started with this one, this is dry enough to go to this one. Now remember, this is just our first swipe at all of this. We're going to be doing a lot of layers to make this look realistic. So... Just going to keep on going. You will probably appreciate it that I won't be talking as much because my body clock is winding down. I'm kind of a, I'm not a night owl. I know some of you are, and you could just stay up till really, really late, but. I have a tendency to be more of a go in bed at nine o'clock and read for a while. So this is gonna be a little different for me painting. The only problem I'm worried about painting this late is sometimes I have done this not for a video, but then I get wound up and I can't settle down to go to sleep. So that's not a good thing either. So hopefully that doesn't happen to me tonight because tomorrow I've got a big day ahead. Okay, I like the way that pink shows through. Again, just first coats here. Now this really leached out into this. So I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of this. It's okay, we can always come back and fix that. But that's usually why I don't do ones back to back because it will run into it. This one's dry enough to do this one here. So let's let's go to a 
whole different color. Oh yeah, this is pretty. Let's try this one. I think this one is, I had all my colors. I actually made a little color chart before I got started, but I'm not sure where I set it. I think it was, well, I don't know where I put it. So <laughs> couldn't be too far in this room, but I want to get to painting on this. So um, what I do sometimes when I'm not sure exactly the colors, I'll take a scrap piece of watercolor and go through and try some different colors on a little color swatch. And that is a good way to see what colors blend together well. Now, on these colors, if you want to paint this, and I hope you do, right now, clematises are everywhere. Even no matter what state you live in, they're everywhere. It's, it's springtime and they're out there. And so what I'm hoping you'll just, if you have a camera or just a cell phone and you can take a picture and maybe get it printed or print it at home, this is a good way just to use this and paint this. And if, then if you say, well, yeah, I don't have all those colors that she's using, that's okay too because you don't have to have the colors that I used. You can use red and blue and different forms of pink and um, blue, all different ones. And you can get any color tone that you want. And that is the beauty of watercolor, that everything starts from primary colors. So if you have your primary colors, you could just go ahead and start with your red, and your blue and your yellow and you can make all kinds of colors if you think about it your red again and your blue will make a purple your um, yellow and blue will make a beautiful green so there are so many many different ways you can do this if you only have a limited budget I don't want that to exclude anybody from trying because life is short and you can just enjoy yourself. I don't know about you, but art just takes me away when I, I just, maybe there's something troubling me or just I'm happy and I just want to be in my happy place. I will just go and start on a new painting and just paint to my heart's delight. And it's just soothing to me. I think it's really healing. And um, you're creating something too. And that's the beauty of that. Okay, right now this looks kind of like a little patchwork quilt, but we're not gonna be worried about it because we know that these are just first layers. So truly, if I saw this, as I have told you before on some videos, I'd be like, you're kidding me, right? This doesn't look very good. And it doesn't right now, but it will eventually. So I'm going to drop this darker purple here. That's a pretty, pretty color. Okay, so we only have two more petals to go on this one. Again, just the beginning. And we're going to take this in here. Now, I'm going to uh, give you another little hint that I learned years ago in watercolor. And a lot of people don't know this, but I try to pass on these hints because it's so good to be able to get these kind of hints and, and learn from them. So this is really disturbing me that that's sticking out like this. But there is a solution. Like you can actually take, just boil some water has to be very, very hot. And literally, this is on a synthetic brush. I don't know that I would do that on a squirrel brush. But for a synthetic brush is what I'm using now. You just pour it over and it will go, and then as soon as you pour it over, it'll just like, it'll go right together and you can save that brush. So I will probably do this, not right now. But um, yeah, because I only purchased this brush like about a month ago and I don't like the way it's separating and it and normally doesn't. This is not normal. 
Okay, we're gonna go back to this one here. This time I'm going to use a cobalt blue. I'm not sure about that blue like that, but then I realized I didn't put another color over it. So um, I do like that color a lot. I just like it better as using that first and then putting the pink over it instead of the way I just did that one. I kind of mixed them together and it kind of gave a dull look, but it's okay, we can fix that. Okay, one more petal, one more petal on this one. And also I'm going to be doing the center a little bit of a, um, a yellow on this. So let's just get this last color down And I think on this one, let's see, I want this to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to go to an ultramarine blue and just drop a little color. And the reason I want this one to be a little bit lighter than this one behind, not very much, but a little bit. Okay, and I've got to do something on that one because I don't like it. I realize I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna get some more colors, but. I think what I'll do is just drop this magenta on it. It's already dried, but this will give it back to a nice color. That'll be similar to those other ones that we have. There we go. Now, I wanna show you in just a minute. There we go. This center. So I don't want to dip into this purple water and I got some clean water next to me. So we're going to dip down here and I want to get some yellow and I'm going to drop some yellow in right there. Now, the reason I'm dropping this yellow in now, I can do it on this one as long as I've got it, because when you take the masking off later, we need to have some color underneath that. And the centers are a little bit yellow anyway, but if I don't put anything in there in the center, when I take the mask off, all I have is a clear white center. And I want those little marks to show through. So that's the reason for that. Okay, like I said, got the first one done and now we're gonna go to this one. So let's start on the one that's closest to me. And we'll just put this down and I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to vary my colors. And I'm going to take a chance and work kind of fast on this one and make these two exactly the same. And since these are littler, I have a little time to keep that wet. And I think we'll drop, I'm gonna go back to my cobalt. A little bit more. Could just drop that in there. And the same for this one. Okay. We'll go on the opposite. And I'm going to go back to that. A little different hue. It's not that magenta. It's more of a um, goodness. I should just find it. Let's see what we're using. That one. It might be cobalt violet, but that looks too light for cobalt violet. So I don't think it is. No. It's some. It's not a magenta, but we'll we'll figure it out. It might be a permanent. Let me see, that's gonna bug me, it's gonna bug you if you don't know what it is. Okay, so the one I was using was permanent magenta, that's this one. And this one is a Quinn magenta. Okay, take it back. This first one was a Quinn, the one I'm using right now is permanent magenta. This is by Winter Newton. The Quinn magenta is um, Holbein. Okay, that clears that one up, so now you'll know. And I think I may be going to a different brush because that is just so bothering me. The 
that sticking out like that and it makes it a little harder to paint. So next video, I'll have to show you how I can repair that one. So I'm going to look and try to find me. Let's see, and I love this size brush. That's one of the reasons I hate to change it, but I'm going to. Okay, this one should be fine. It just doesn't have as good of a point. It's a round, but it'll be okay. All right, so let's go and put some ultramarine blue on this one. Just, ooh, look how nice and dark that is. Really, really deep, but pretty. Did I just drop water there? I did. Ah, goodness. Okay, so it's gonna make a nice little water blossom for right now, but we'll fix it later. And let's go to this little one here. And we will drop, actually I'm gonna go right next to this, across from it I should say, and put that color in. You know what I forgot? I forgot to put yellow right there. But that's okay, we can get that a little bit later. Boy, you can maybe tell already that yes, I'm getting tired. So hopefully this will turn out good, huh? I really don't want to do it three times. <laughs> that would be really bad. Okay. I'm going to make this really nice and dark. Just dropping that in there. Again, how fun is that just to drop color in like this and let it do its thing? Okay. I'm just taking this straight off the palette. And then this time I'm going to drop the pink on top of it, or the magenta. Just like that. Make this come together there. Okay, I'm going to do that same kind of thing here. And we're going to skip one. We'll go here. A lot of the brushes I'm using, I've had for years. If you take good care of your brushes, they should last you a long time. However, if you find yourself using your tips a lot, your brushes are not gonna last as long. So I try to paint more from the side of my brush. In the earlier years when I was learning watercolor, I found that I did brush from my tip, kind of just like this. And you don't wanna do that. I'm using cobalt blue right now as base. You want to do as much as possible. You'll have to use your tips at times because that's what they're for. But this is a good way just to kind of use the back part of it and you'll still get the same result, but you'll protect your brush so much longer. <clears throat> I want a little more of that bright color here. So we'll just drop that in there. Again, it may seem weird that I'm just doing all these different colors, but they'll all come together. I just don't want every little petal to look exactly the same. It, it just gets boring. This is actually a leaf, so we're gonna, I think it is. Let me think, did I put that as a leaf? I think I did. But then that would seem lopsided, so I'm not sure. I am going to leave that as a leaf. Yep, I'm going to. May not be, may not have been what I originally intended, but I think, I think I did want that for a leaf. Okay, so we're gonna do this. Well, you can tell I've got my window open and normally when I have the window open, the birds are singing and 
they've all gone to bed. So you don't get to hear the beautiful birds singing right now, which is kind of a bummer because it's just a happy sound to me. I love it. I'm trying to think if I want to wait just a little bit till that dries because we don't want to do that. So I'm going to take a chance. It may flow in there a little bit. I think we'll be okay. I might just leave that a little bit lighter and not put two coats on it. Oops, don't want to go into my yellow part. There we go. Okay, so we still have this to do right here. And that's kind of a two-parter. So I'm going to make this one here a little bit darker. And then that one will be a little bit lighter. Just pick up some of this light. Some of this is going to go into this one, and I know that already. But we'll, we'll fix it later if it does. Okay, so this... Hmm, I think... Yeah, we'll just, put, we'll just put the yellow back there eventually. Okay, so now let's go back to here. And now we're going to start perfecting a little bit of these. So I'm going to start with this one here because it looks a little dull. And let's see, let's add some of this. Ooh, really dark, really pretty. And I'm going to mix just a little bit of this with it. So this is my next coat right here. And you'll probably wonder, well, why didn't we just paint them this the first time? And that is because when we lift some of these lines for the lines that go in here, it will actually lift back to some of this nice color underneath. And that's the reason I put more than one coat on underneath. It looks, it looks really, really pretty. Now, I told you that my IT guy is coming tomorrow. And I just want to give a big shout out to this guy. He is so good. If it wasn't for him, his name is Tyler, I would not be producing these YouTubes. And, and I'm not joking. <laughs> I'm an artist. I love to do my art. His art and craft is computers. He builds computers. He's just so incredibly savvy where I'm not. But don't you just love that we all have different strengths? And so his strength is doing things that we all need in our world today, computers. But my strength is not that. And it doesn't have to be. We can, we're different people. And I really, really like that. So that makes it so nice. I'm going to jump over to here. You're going to see that I'm putting a little more mix of a red wash here. It's really a magenta wash. See how this second coat even goes on so smooth. It's just it's got a little base on it. Now, I want to tell you, if you've never painted with hot press, which I'm using now, I want to be honest, it can be very, very frustrating at first. In fact, when I first started using hot press, I have to admit, I was just, I wanted to scream because it just wasn't reacting the way cold press does. Now, with cold press, you have more, um, what they call a tooth. So there's more texture in your paper, so it's actually easier easier for the paints just to kind of grip. And the hot press is really a smooth, smooth paper. And so usually I find with hot press, it's not like your first coat goes to waste, but you see how it's kind of okay. And then how this second coat goes on and you're like, yeah, that feels really, really good, really good. Okay. I don't want to make the same mistake I made last time. I wanted, I hope you noticed how I covered up that water drop there. 
And because this is wet and this is wet, I really don't want to do this yet. So these are now dry, some of them, like this one. So I'm going to go to here and put this one in. We'll just go back to this. So anyway, if you typically use cold press, cold press will be just beautiful on this. It won't be a problem at all. And if it's something you're more comfortable with, you're going to really do a better job. So use what you're comfortable with. I am never locked into like, oh, you have to do exactly what I say. That would be kind of crazy because I want you to have creative license too. So if you like what I'm doing, copy it. But if you want to say, hey, I kind of like this, but I want to do my own thing, then do it because that makes it yours and it's pretty. Okay, so now let's see if this, yeah, this is dry enough for me to get in there. And now we're still going to do a lot of shading and um, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. in the as soon as I get in this next coat on, we're gonna do some more shading here behind where these shadows would be. You just see how smooth and pretty that goes on. I don't know if um, some of you like Native American art, but I um, think it's just beautiful. And I had a, another student come the other day and together we worked on this really pretty feathers from a headdress just beautiful and I can't wait I can't wait to do it I don't know that I'll, I'll teach it right now anyway on uh, YouTube but maybe eventually but first I want to do it and um, I think it's just so pretty I can't wait anyway the drawing is is really cool so we drew it out um, and are just waiting waiting till Monday to paint on that and oh, really excited, really excited. Now, if you notice that these tips here, this is just going into the tape. I am just simply bringing them out, but we'll take those off. Um, I have a, a wonderful lady that I have taken art lessons from. And as I've told you in some of the previous videos, you should never stop learning. You should never arrive. You should always be willing to learn new things. And so even me, as long as I've been painting and teach others, I want to continue to learn and grow. And so I'll either take workshops from time to time or I'll go on YouTube like you're doing now or just I want to further what I'm learning. And it's so important to do that. You um, you learn new tricks, you learn new things. And one of the things that she really emphasized is taking your painting off, especially off the edge. In other words, don't always just have it clinging in the center. And for those of you who are not sure about the rule of thirds, Rule of thirds is really important. Um, you use that in flower arranging. You use that in um, camera photography. And so if you're not sure what the rule of thirds is, it's you try not to put something smack dab in the middle of your painting. It's better to have it just a little up or a little down or a little to the left or a little to the right. And I'm not talking extreme, I'm just talking off-centered and that usually falls within the rule of thirds. And it makes such a pleasing composition. And now I don't even have to think about it, I just find myself just doing it because it's the rule of thirds and it just feels normal and natural. And when I see something super, super centered, it just doesn't look good anymore. It really doesn't look good anymore. Okay, so I haven't done this one yet. 
and I'm trying to decide what I want to do on that one. It's really light, and I want it to be lighter, but not quite that light. So I think I'll do a little mixture and just keep it a little on the lighter side. Just like that. And then we'll come down and finish those others. And then we're gonna do some, a uh, little bit of shading underneath where some of the shadows are. Okay, that feels good for the first, or the second coat, I should say. So I'm gonna use this one right here where we just put this color in. I'll just use it. Okay, and I'm going to use this color here. You can see where some of those just didn't go as pretty as you want. We'll just fix it. Okay. There we go. Now I need to definitely get some more of that red back in. So we'll put that in magenta. I keep calling it red, but get a little magenta there. So I want this one to be more magenta color because I don't want it to be that same color at the, the petal that's overlapping it. So we want to have a little bit of a contrast. Okay. It's going to be really small and tricky to get into that area, but not impossible. Okay, I like that a lot, and so I'm going to go and do that one here. The same. And I'm gonna leave that because it's so wet right now and go to another one. I wanna get a little bit more blue and pick up a little of that other blue we had and just mix in a little of this and we'll go to this outside one, really making it dark. Well, that one wanted to travel a little, didn't it? So I'll just, you can get a blossom really easy if you go back into your wet area. However, just keep in mind that if you start to get a blossom, if you put a darker color over it, it stops the blossom. So it's good to know that because it's really easy to get that. I wanna wait just a little bit since I know if I put this in, it's gonna creep into this one and wait just a little bit on that. Okay, so maybe we can start doing some, um, let's see, shadowing. I'm trying to find where I put my, yeah. Okay, so what I wanna do right now is I'm going to use some, what's it called? Oh boy, now this is where I start getting tired and I have to think, ah, oh, I use it all the time. So let me just find it and then we'll have it. Mineral Violet. I'm going to put a little bit of Mineral Violet in here, right there. And that's gonna be some of my shading colors. Okay, so this Mineral Violet is very dark and I want, okay, I'm gonna look at my picture here and here, just in here, it has a little bit of dark area. Right in here, and then it kind of comes out. So now I'm going to just soften that down a little bit, just like that. And I see it behind here. So I'm going to put just a little shading right like that on this one. Okay, and we'll start down here. And we'll just soften that out. Sometimes I'll just carry it through like this if I feel like I'm just gonna get a hard line. 
Okay, I also see some in here. And that, let's see. So right in here, this actually goes like that and comes into that leaf or petal, sorry, right in there, just like that. Now, what will we will need to put some lines eventually, but it has to be really, really dry before we do that. Okay, now I don't like to just leave a line like this. I'd rather have, oh, that looks good. I like that. Here, this would have it just a little bit right in here. So we'll go just a little bit right in there. Maybe just a little bit here. This just gives it some extra character for it and makes it look more realistic. That one just kind of came in there a little bit. Later, I'll lift off just a little of this. I could even do it right now if we wanted to. Just a little. I'm just taking pure water with a damp brush. Like I have literally taken my paper towel and just dampened a little bit of that. Okay. We'll, we'll leave that for now. I just want to have that soft. And right in here, I see some of that color. So we're gonna go into here. And I'm just looking at my photo reference to kind of tell me where I need to go as far as shadows. So I don't like to just make a straight line. I'd rather have a pattern, a shape. So that when I do take it into a shadow, it isn't just a line. And let's see. Right in here, it's got a little bit. So we'll just take it in like this. And we're almost done with that. Now we can come back and finish these because they should be dry enough. And just put a little bit there. Okay. I'm going to soften that just a little bit more. Okay, we're going to leave that for now. And this one needs a little darker here. So let's just bring that color here. Now it's dry enough to easily get in there. My husband's gonna think I'm crazy staying up this late to do this, but oh well, the things we do for art, right? And then I want to put this in here because we lost a little of our color. Sometimes it will wash out like that. And that was partially because I had it too wet next to another one. And this one right here. So we probably better go a little darker on that. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Now, remember this is a, a leaf, so we don't have to worry about that. What I'm going to do is blow dry this because I'm going to take that mask off and that's gonna make a huge difference. So let's get this blow dry and then we'll start doing some touches, finishing touches on this. Then we gotta address the leaves. That is nice and dry. Now here comes the fun part. Taking this off. And of course, we're going to add some colors to that. Isn't that pretty? 
So this is where mask for the stamens of a flower really makes sense to do. It's worth taking the extra time to do that because it, can you imagine how hard it would be to paint that really dark color in there? It, it would be really hard and time consuming. This just makes so much more sense to do this. Now, I always rub my hands over it because sometimes you can feel the mask and if you feel anything that shouldn't be there, you'll know that that's not good. Okay, so I'm going to take my clean paper towel. I've got clean water and take this off right here where I told you that it was just on the tape. So you'll kind of see how that goes off the edge like that. First thing I need to do is put in that yellow, the um, original color that we used. And so I'm gonna take a little bit smaller of a brush here because I need to get in there and not mess it up. So I'm going to use that raw sienna that we originally used and be very, very careful because I don't want that to touch my purple. And this is going to look darker because it will dry lighter but we don't have any green here either. So we'll put a little green in to make it go with the rest. So just do that. All right, so now let's just drop a little of that same green. We'll start with the, the pale green, permanent pale. We just want that to look like we did it in the very beginning, even though we didn't. Okay, and then I'm gonna put just a little of that other one I told you about. We'll use a little bit of that. Right now I'm using a, what, what size is this? It's just a six, a little six brush that has a nice little point and I can just drop in there. All right, now let's work on these stamens. So these have a very, very pale yellow. So we're gonna go to what we used on the center and we're gonna mix a bunch of this so we have enough to go around. Then we just need to do a little work in between. So it's gonna lightly put this on and this small brush really makes a difference because you can see how easy it is to pick up the purple. You gotta be really careful here just to keep it yellow, but we can leave some of them kind of whitish. Just like that. Oops, see, got a little purple there, but just go and take your brush I'll get a little more yellow. And if some of them get a little, per it's not honestly the end of the world. So I noticed that on my original photo, there is just a touch of green right around here. So I'm going to drop that in where it's going to spread a little bit with the yellow, which is good. Just make it really soft. And then I notice that there's a little bit of maybe Quinn Burnt Orange. This is my go-to color for any of you that have watched my videos. You know this is one of my favorite colors by Daniel Smith. So that's that. And then I see, I'm gonna go to some Verdita Blue. These are just little touching places. And this kind of goes, a little bit blue, I need a little bit more. A little blue around here. Maybe it just goes into shadow a little bit. So just a little bit there. We look here and it goes a little bit right in here. Let's see if I need anything else. At the edge, I might just put a little teeny bit I mean little, no, a little more than that though, of the Quinn Burnt Orange on the tip ends. 
Some of them have it, not all of them do, but some of them have it. So we'll just kind of put it in randomly. If you think that's too much, you can always just lightly dab it out just a teeny. There. Now I still want, it feels like a little more blue, Perdita blue right in here around Around here again, it's probably just shadow, but I want that to really stand out there. There, I like that. Now for this one, the same, I'm gonna use that same blue right at the base. So this is kind of an upside down one. And it has a little bit of shadow there. Now if I do it too much, I'll just, Take a little of that out. I don't like that. I think that was too much right there. Okay. That looks pretty good. And let's see. What else? Maybe just a little print burnt orange to emphasize some of these. Because it goes like in kind of a ball form there. Oh, I know what. I know what I was gonna do. Right in the very center is more of a gray. So if I mix this blue, get a little bit more, and the, the Quinburn orange, I'll get a nice little gray. And I noticed on this one, right in here, the center kind of has like a little gray, and it does right here too. So just a little bit. That's where it all kind of comes together. All right, so we need to do these a little bit yellow. Just like that. And we'll get a little of that Quint burnt orange. And do the tips, just a few of them. All right. I think that looks pretty good. The only thing I want left is a little more of this Fredita blue right in here. So these are just gonna have a little bit more. Yep, I think we can call this good. Okay, so now this is where some fun part comes and this is where I'm going to be using some of my scrub brushes. So I'm going to use this scrub brush, which as I've told you in previous videos, you can't get any more. They just literally don't make any more, which is a bummer. But I just recently purchased these. It's called by Creative Mark. It's Creative Mark Scrubber. And there's three of them. And I can't remember how much, like maybe $12.99, $13.99, not very much. There's a little teeny one. Maybe you can see this one better. And I love this. It's just teeny. We're going to use this for veins on the leaves. There's a great big one. I don't use that one very often, to be honest with you. I use the one similar to the size that I have there. So this one and this one is my favorite. But anyway, it is a little stiffer than what I have. So you just need to be aware of that and and really don't put pressure on it when you're doing this. So what I'm gonna do is make some marks. And you see how that beautiful underneath color comes alive there. And so all clematises have these lovely lines. So I just keep a clean paper towel. And if it doesn't do it the first time, just come down a little bit and it just is so pretty to do this as a finishing touch. And again, when you've got these layers, you can easily, easily do this. 
So we're gonna, I have a very light touch with this scrub brush. I do not want to disturb my paper. I could use a paintbrush and do this, it would work. However, I don't like to fry my tips and I find that if I, I do this back and forth motion, say here, eventually my tips will go bad. And so this scrubber brush works really, really good for this purpose. Now this one actually comes down like this. And whoops, don't want to get a drip there. And then this one comes down here. Now, if you noticed on my reference photo, it had been raining when she took this picture, which was just last week, and we had rain. Oh my goodness, we had rain, 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 rain. But, oh, the trees are so lovely, and the grass is so beautiful, and I actually enjoy the rain as long as it doesn't go on and on and on and on. I love sunshine too, but how refreshing to have the rain. And here in Idaho, we are going from like, I think it was like 58 or something like that, just like two days ago, up to 90 next week. It's like, whoa, talk about temperature change. Really drastic, really drastic. Okay, there's that. And this here, again, I just hope you can tell that I'm using such a light, light touch on this. Just light, lots of water. Now, when I say lots of water, I, I do use lots of water, but I want it to be damp and not, so I may pick up water but then I damp it a little because there's that fine line between too much and not enough. Okay, and then down here, we're gonna use this. These little ones just look like they kind of have one in them. And this great big one will come here. You kind of have to pay attention to the direction that you're your leaf is or your petal is going and these go right down side by side and then I want to curve this one a little bit more okay there we go and then these are going to go this direction. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now, there are some just little touches that I want to do. So I want to just take this and take out just a little bit more on this side here. Very light touch, very light touch. Okay. Okay. And let me look at this. This tip right here has a little bit of lightness, so I just I'm going to soften this edge out a little bit with my scrub brush. And I think and I like that. Okay, so let's go down to here and do the same thing. The other thing about a light touch makes your lines thinner. So if you have a real heavy touch, you're gonna make those lines 
a little more than you want to with too much pressure. So you gotta be really careful about that. Well, since I'm not used to doing nighttime, you can hear nighttime sounds. I guess I could close my window, but the fresh air feels really good. So you hear night sounds, motorcycles and people going to town here. So almost done, we still have our leaves to do. This one I want to come out to the tip. Let me make that just a little bit more. This will just make one since we have that leaf there. Oh, and that was one thing I was going to do was make this a little bit lighter here. Just because that meets that really dark area. Yeah, that looks better. And in fact, we could just exaggerate that just a little bit with our mark here. So I hope you can see that these are just finishing touches and they take it just to a different level. If you just left it like it were, they would just have a tendency to look kind of flat and that's not what we're desiring. Now, after when I make those leaves, which is gonna be coming up very soon, I will show you that little teeny brush that you can purchase in the package. And all of those can be gotten on um, Amazon. I use Amazon a lot just because it's easy. And if you're on Prime, you can just not pay postage and you get it in a few days and it's great. Oh, I'm so sorry about the noise, but I guess I can't control what my neighborhood street's doing. I just wanted that to be a little bit lighter. In fact, I might make this one just, just a touch lighter, too. These are just little touches you can do at the end. These are just finishing touches that I personally like. I think it gives it just some depth. And uh, we're going to do this one, too, just on the edge because it's lighter anyway. We'll just exaggerate that lightness. Okay. Okay, now to the leaves. So... Rinse out this brush and let's go for our leaves. We also have these vines in here that we need to do. So I think I'll do the vines first actually. The vines are kind of a, I don't know what you call, they're partly green and they're partly gold. So you know, I think I'll use, um, yeah, I think I'll use some olive green. That'll just kind of, and we'll drop in just a little here and there of, um, of coin burnt orange, just where they go. Okay, so there's one vine, and clematis have a lot of vines, and so I'm just going to do that. And then I have a vine here, just kind of taking it right off the page. And we have a vine right here. And it seemed like I had another one. Maybe just these are just leaf stems. This is a leaf stem here. Now, while those are still wet, we'll take that quin burnt orange and we'll drop just, you know what? I'm not gonna use quin burnt orange. I'm going to use what's called brown matter. It's kind of a reddish brown, really pretty. And that's really what I see more and it will, it will just look good. Yeah, that, I like that. 
and just kind of gives what those vines look like. Am I looking at my reference photo and that's what I see. All right, that's pretty, I like that. Okay, a little bit bigger brush now for my, uh, let's see, that's someone that I said that was giving me fit, so I don't wanna use that. Let's see, I want that nice in-between color, but I want good coverage too. Mm, didn't expect to have to hunt for a brush here. I have some really, really big ones in here. That's not quite what I want, but I don't want too little either. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to use that anyway and just, oh, here I can use this one. I'll use my number eight. Okay, so remember, we already kind of covered up, oh, I didn't cover them all up though, but that's okay. So let's start on the ones we do have and I'm going to try this green that we used as a background. This is just our first coat. And I'm gonna put this down here. Probably would want just a little bit bigger of a brush than this, but I guess I'm going to have to be happy with this. This is the brush queen talking, like really, I have so many brushes, it's almost pitiful. Anybody that knows me, they probably chuckle at me and we do laugh about it a little bit because I love brushes. I love to try new brushes. I don't know why I like brushes and <laughs> they make me happy. <laughs> and so, yes, I do have a lot of brushes. I can probably see one over there, but I don't wanna have to get up and disturb this video, but. Now this is not the color that this is gonna stay. This is our first, just kind of like what we did on the petals. This is our first stab at it. Because quite frankly, if I left them this color, I don't care for that at all. And while that's still wet, I'm going to use a little of that Quinn, all right, sorry, not Quinn, that olive green is it's rich and it's pretty and I want to use that as a little bit of shade color. That feels good. And then I'm just going to carry that through. Okay. And this top one, I'm going to put a whole different one, but I'm not going to do it yet because it's too dark. I mean, it's too wet next to that. So I'm going to switch, I'm gonna use a sap green at the top and see how I like this one. I just squeezed out this sap green last night and it's not the same sap green as I was using. So I can't remember which brand I had and I don't care for this one. So I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to this just to get a, a color that I like better. So this feels pretty good. Okay. Now let's take that while it's wet and use that same green mix of olive green because I think that's a nice combo. It's rich, it looks pretty. And I'm gonna carry that right up here. Oops. Okay. We'll just leave that and let that dry. This is on the tape. Okay. Can't wait to come back to that one. And now this one doesn't have any color, we left it. So it will be a different color altogether and that is good because just like our clematis, we don't want them to all be the same colors. We wanna vary our leaves. If you look in nature, all leaves, everything is different. Everything, everything. 
just like snowflakes. It still amazes me how snowflakes can be all different. You know, I can tell I'm tired. I'm using my paper towel more than I normally ever use my paper towel. It's good. We're getting close to the end. It's a good thing. Okay, let's just drop some of that in here and I will, I will slap myself awake here. So I do a good job here. This is just at the top. I'm not making a mistake. I'm just putting this in here. All right, so down here, I think I'm just going to start with my olive green because I want this to be a little bit darker and then we can add some colors later. One nice thing about this brush, it has a great little tip and it has a nice, um, has a really nice, it's just a cheap brush. Oh boy, I almost dropped it. It's a Princeton Velvet Touch 8 Long Round. I love the point. I love the way it comes to point. You can really get in some areas good. And I'm going to do the same thing here and just paint this. This beautiful olive green. I discovered this color last year at a workshop that I went to in Georgia. I'd never used olive green. Ooh, I love it a lot. Okay, now we can go to this one here. And actually, I don't mind the contrast at all. So I'm going to just put it a little different color over that though. I'm going to get this in a nice pattern here, which you have a nice contrast in there. And this one that we just did, I'm going to add a little of that extra green. And I'm going to add a little bit more. And the main reason I'm going to do that is because I want to color contrast here. There we go. Now at the bottom, I think what I'm going to do is add some of that olive green back in the bottom while it's still wet so I can just drop it in. Just like Just gives it a nice little contrast. And let's see, this, I like that enough that I wanna do that here as well. We already did it once, but I want a little bit more. Just a little more. Oh, we are so almost done with this picture. And I can hopefully go right to sleep because it is, wow. It is 11.26 at night. This is so not me staying up this late. My biggest fear, even though I'm tired, like I told you earlier, is like, no, I hope and pray that I am able to hit the bed and get to sleep because I've got a really big day tomorrow, as I said earlier, so. I want a little more darkness. I'm going to go to what's called a perylene green and mix that with, with my um, olive green. Yeah, we just need some more contrast here. And let me get that little leaf there. That looks good. And I want to actually pull some of this color up here. Just like that. Okay, so this now looks weak and this looks weak. So we need to come back with this. So I'm going to put a little different color temperature on here. What I try to do is mix cools and warms so that everything doesn't look the same. And that's what I've done along here cools and warms, and also how important it is to have good values. 
And, well, it's important to have good values, too. But when it comes to painting, values are very important, meaning the darkest of the darks, the lightest of the darks. I think we've achieved that because we have some really dark, 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 dark. And we have some very, very light, light. And we have some nice mediums around. And that's what makes a painting much more interesting. Feels like I left off a little of that lemon yellow right in here. I think it's just because I put the blue. I want that back in. Okay, so I'm going to work on this one a little bit. Put a little more dark. Right in there. And we'll just leave that a little bit softer right there. And then when that's dry, I'm going to take a little off of this edge to keep a lighter edge. And let's just go a little darker here. And we'll get really dark. And drop that in while it's wet. Okay. Okay, I'm getting sloppy here. I don't want to do that. Fix that. So I'm going to still go darker yet. I literally, literally want that just to be really, really dark. And maybe on both sides and just leave a little bit of light like that. Now I'll tell you, it's a good thing to see. So I got a little sloppy there. But if you put a darker color down, you can fix that and make it come out okay. Remember, this is just my tape. Okay. All right, I wanna fix this. I wanna go just a little darker here. I know I already did once, but I wanna do it again because the more contrast between these two leaves makes a huge difference. I'm going to bring it down like this, bring it here. All right, now this one, let's see if I can do that without disturbing it. I, now see, I'm doing what I said I don't like to do because I can honestly fry this, but I feel like First, I need a little more olive green in this to blend in. It'll still be lighter. My goodness, you hear such different sounds. I'm just so not used to painting at nighttime. I'm hearing sirens, motorcycles. I live in Idaho and we're near the capital. And, um, Clearly, I'm not a night owl. So these are kind of, I'm usually fast asleep by the time this comes by. Okay, I'm going to quickly dry my leaves. We're almost done. We're gonna make some of those wonderful veins and I wanna show you with that little teeny brush and we're good to go. Okay, so let me just do this and we're almost done. Alrighty, so first I want to show you, let's see, I want to get, I'm going to show you that little teeny scrubber, but I also want to show you one other thing here. Remember I taped this down, so now I have something underneath it. There we go. Hopefully that's still straight. I feel like I'm, something is under here, a brush or something under there. So, yep, sure enough. Okay, all right, take that back down again. This 
leaf right here. I want to soften into this leaf right here, the dark. So I want this just to be a nice, soft edge that goes right into here. Just like that. And I'm going to do one other thing here. I just took the blow dryer and dried it. I'm cleaning up just some of the edges where I got out just a little bit. There's this wonderful cover, color that I love called um, Quin Gold. And I just want to put a little quick Quin Gold down. It just gives it a really pretty yellowy gold right down here it, it just I think to me it just gives it that finishing touch here unfortunately it's gonna prevent me from doing my next step until it's dry but I got to looking at that and I thought I want these leaves to look really rich so just coin gold is made by um, Daniel Smith and if you ever find your stuff getting a little dull this is not dull my leaves but I just want to heighten it up a little bit so it just to me it's a beautiful beautiful color just to, oh actually this one's not by Daniel Smith this is by Holbein Daniel Smith makes it and that's all I used to buy but I discovered this one last year and it's a really pretty color Okay, I think we're good. Well, I should drop a little on this, be consistent. So it doesn't take away from the colors that I already have down there. It just enhances the colors that I do have. Okay, I like that. And I'm glad I just took the extra step to do that. Now, what I wanna show you, but I have to blow dry again, and I promise I'll hurry, but this won't take too much time away from you, just more time away from me. All right, finally, right? We now get to do one of the finishing touches. We're so almost done. So this is that little teeny brush I showed you that's in the pack. This is great for leaf veins. So I'm going to get it really wet. And I'm just going to scrub this very thin line. There's so many different ways to do this. I have done it just leaving the white. I've done it that way. I've done this after effect. I've done it with a dark green. There's all kinds of ways to do this. But this is one way. And another time I'll show you a different way. So you can choose, but isn't that pretty? Just a nice thin line. Just like that, get that right up to there. Same thing here. And again, the lighter the touch, the thinner the line you're gonna get. Okay. Luckily I don't have too many leaves, so this won't take too long. Then I'm going to do one final touch that at the last, I told you I had to do this twice. I did one final touch and I thought it was cute. And really you have to understand that there is no curly cues or anything in these. There's vines, but there's no curly cues. But I thought, wouldn't it be cute just to make a few little curly cues coming off of here. And so that's what we're gonna do, and then we are done. I'm going to bed. Hopefully you're watching this at a decent time, or maybe you're a night owl and you want to paint like this and this is no big deal for you. So everybody's different, everybody's body clock's different. Oh, that tick. Oh, 
bit. You can put that just a little bit more. Ah, two more to go. Two more to go. thought about doing this in the morning, but then I decided no, I will have that on my mind at nighttime and then I may not be able to sleep anyway knowing I have to redo this. So I think it's better just to be done and get it done. And I'm very happy with effects. In fact, I actually like this one better than the first one. So I think this Sometimes there's advantages to doing it twice. Okay. Now, I want to show you one quick. Let's hope this is quick. I know I'm going to still do the curly cues. I've stayed up this late, so what a little bit more. So I'm going to take this really dark, very wet washi, and I want to go down this line here. Just like that. It just gives it a little more realism. And I'm going to soften that down. So I'm just going to put it down one side. Just like this. Just to give it just a feel of realism here. Same thing here. Of course, as I'm blow drying these, I'm thinking of all this like, hey, I should put this here, and I'm just thinking the clock is tick, 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 ticking. <laughs> so, but again, this is only me. You can watch it anytime you want, so it doesn't have to be a clock ticking for you. Alrighty. That one didn't turn out there, so I'm going to do that one again. Too much of a got off. Okay. Let's spread that one out just a little bit. All right, last one. All right, now for the curly cues. This is the final touch. So I'm going to use a nice liner brush. And this one looks good. And let's see, I think I want a mix between the really dark paralene green and my olive green. That's a good mix. And what I want to do is just take this and just put some curly cues there. Like I said, Clematis doesn't have it, but I think it's a nice touch. And so we won't overdo it. Now this time I'm moving my tape because I need to I need to have this board here. I'm gonna connect that right there. So I think you've seen enough of it that I can safely move that tape. So let's put one here. And I'm going to wind it around like this. And let's put one here. And do we want anything else? We don't want to overdo it. Maybe just a little one. I don't know, maybe cut, I don't know. 
coming off of here. We'll do one more. It's just bonus. This is a bonus here. I gotta have it the right angle to do it right though. Let's just put a little one here. If you accidentally don't make your curve, you can just do that. All right, now there is one more thing I wanna do. This is just a little step that I haven't done for a long time. I think the last time I did it was on the chicken. And I wanna make sure that I don't get it on my painting here. So what I'm gonna do is get this really nice. I just wanna put a few little dots here and there. Especially up here. It's going to be nice and juicy to do that. There we go. Yeah, I like that. Let's put a few down here. Okay, now I'm going to literally just do this like I am flicking, but a couple here and there. Maybe up here. Boy, I get really creative at nighttime, don't I? I'm joking. <laughs> okay. All right. I think it's done. Yay. Honestly, I love it. So I hope you do. Anyway, God bless and good night. And I'll see you on the next video. Please hit like if you like this video. Please subscribe because I want to keep producing more videos. So by your subscribing, it's encouraging to me to know that people are following it. And I'm trying to do a wide variety. If you have not seen my videos before, I've done a horse, a cow, a chicken, a white chicken actually, a couple little cards, a cat. Um, I'm not sure what's going to be next, but I love to paint so it will be something hopefully that you'll enjoy too maybe even another flower but comments on the actual um youtube video really really helps me please keep them nice i i really i really know that there's a lot of trolling out there for negative comments and i hope that um that isn't the kind of people watching my videos would want to do. But just encouragement, or like I said earlier in the video, if you have questions, I am very happy to answer them. And if you don't understand a step I did, ask me, and I'm more than happy to help. So you have a great night, and um, hopefully you'll see me again next week. Thanks.